Hi, I'm Micah Clark. Thank you for joining us today. Appreciate you watching this each week. I have a guest here that many of you may not recognize, but you may know his voice because he's a radio talk show host on the south side of Indianapolis with Freedom 95. And uh, Todd, that station runs from Franklin all the way up. I catch, catch it in Noblesville every day. It's got a yeah. good coverage of central Indiana. But I'm so glad you joined us. Todd Huff is our guest, has a morning radio show, and I know you're on like 17 stations, I think. We are. We're on 17 yeah. stations around the country now. So I, I catch you on Freedom 95 in the mornings. Uh, tell us about your radio station and, and what led you to maybe getting into radio. Yeah. So, well, first of all, thanks for having sure. me. It's a pleasure to, to come up here and, and sit down with you. But um, I took the scenic route to radio. I was um, in college. I went to Butler University okay. here in the city, and I was a political science major. And my plan at the time was to go to law school. Mm -hmm. And so I ended up um, attending a pre-law program as part of my undergrad sure. at a school called American University. And I was the lone conservative Christian voice in that classroom, uh, me and a bunch of East Coast liberals pretty okay. much. And it was uh, fireworks, to say the least, and I loved it. Uh -huh. uh, but I also decided the world has one too many attorneys in the process, so I ended up, when I graduated, sounds made up, but managing a 200-acre standard bred horse farm. Oh, cool. So it was me and a bunch of horses in a little bitty town called Hall, Indiana. And it was on that farm that I started listening to talk radio, okay. and I thought, this is what I want to do. And so, uh, but podcasting wasn't a thing mm -hmm. back in those days. I'd never had radio training. So I took the scenic route, got into business. Uh, I ran my own company. I ran a boys and girls club for a while. And then on a trip, a uh, vacation to Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, I asked my wife, I said, hey, what do you think about me starting a podcast? And in full transparency, I'm thinking nationally syndicated talk radio show. And she might have been thinking something I did on the weekends. But she <laughs> said, yes, Micah. That's what I remember. <laughs> and so uh, we started in August of 2015 and okay. then took that show to Freedom 95. Mm -hmm. And the rest is kind of history. Yeah, I mean, tell us some of the other stations. I know our audience probably can't listen. Maybe they have family in other areas. What yeah. are some of those stations you're... Yeah, so we're in um, we're in St. Louis, we're in Sarasota, Florida, Tampa, Florida. There's some a small station in D.C. I'm in Milwaukee, Pittsburgh. We have a small station in Vegas, Long Beach, California, uh, Jacksonville, Florida, Pittsburgh. If I didn't say that, there's um, seven. We're on seventeen now. Okay. And what time, I know, what, tell us what time your show airs here on Freedom 95. So on Freedom, we're on during the morning drive, 5 to 7 a.m., and they also run at 11 p.m. and then overnights as okay. well. Um, and then other stations will put us in at different times. We're typically on in the afternoon drive time for most folks, sure. uh, but we're on in the morning here in Indy. Okay. Well, I know as a talk show host, I can throw you all sorts of political no, questions. I'm right. going to throw you a couple. But um, what what do you do for show prep? Where's your heart? What what issues do you like to address? That's a great question. So for me, I like to think of our content as kind of the intersection of politics, culture, worldview, and faith. Mm -hmm. um, this might sound strange to some folks, maybe not to your uh, audience, I don't know, but I kind of consider myself a type of evangelist mm -hmm. um, because the message that we speak about on the show is fundamentally, um, it's it's Christian. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean that, you know, I, I tell folks the mission of the show is to help people hear and receive truth. That's mm -hmm. ultimately the gospel mm -hmm. of Jesus Christ. There's a lot of other things that are true right. in our culture today that we need to be proclaiming, right. namely that I don't know, boys aren't girls right. or different things like that. Mm -hmm. And so we find ourselves in a bunch of different issues and or, uh, different uh, topics and issues. And I like to think about it as we're fighting a multi-front battle, mm -hmm. right? We've got, of course, the political battle, which is obvious, mm -hmm. but this is also happening in our schools. This is happening in our business community. This is happening in our media. I call it the seven pillars of propaganda mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that the yeah. re left run. And we're fighting battles across the, the spectrum here. And so if it's at the intersection of politics, culture, faith, and religion, and it interests me, then that's what you'll find us talking about on the show. Well, before we get into some specific political issues, maybe, something I wanted to ask you about, I just heard about within the last few days, um, George Soros, people mm -hmm. know, uber leftist, uber wealthy guy, wants to buy 200 radio talk show that. stations. And the FCC, which is probably stocked with Biden people, is fast tracking it uh -huh. so that he can get all these talk radio stations. I was thinking about that. It amazes me 
the left has academia, they have ABC, C CBS, mm -hmm. NBC, CNN, MSNBC, they have most of the magazines are left. They have everything, but they have to go after the one area where there's some diversity. In spite of their talk of tolerance, diversity, they want everybody to think one way That's and right. hear one point of view. It's very totalitarian. It is. Uh, what's your, are any of those your stations? <laughs> you know, not I don't not know that I know of. I've had some interesting <laughs> situations with some of our stations, but not that I know of. But yeah, that, that's, well, it goes to show that, you know, people think, you know, podcasting is great. And mm -hmm. it's, um, but talk radio for what I do and what I talk about is still where most people consume right. it. I mean, right. people like Rush Limbaugh, mm -hmm. the greatest yep. by a country mile of all time. Um, he created the habit. You sit down in your car and you turn on the mm -hmm. talk radio station mm -hmm. if you're a listener. So um, it's a powerful medium. And, you know, I remember Rush used to say, and I love this about his content, he would say he had a TV show at one point. Mm -hmm. yep. And he said, when I was on television or had my TV show, I would hear people say, hey, I liked your tie. Right. But when he said, I had a radio show and talk about things there, they would say, I liked what you said about mm -hmm. this or that. It's mm -hmm. like the theater of the mind. Right. And it, it is a powerful medium. So I don't blame him for wanting to use radio to try to get the message out, but you're right. The way that they do it, the way that they think is, is a cancer to, to yeah. our culture. Well, I remember Rush talking about this too. There were attempts to compete with him on the left, uh -huh. with liberal talk, and they all failed. Good luck, yeah. Yeah, so I don't know what Soros is going to do, but he could convert them all to sports talk which is uber leftist too, by <laughs> the way. That's true. The ESPN and that other stuff, it's, they're probably more the left than, than... I think they are, yeah. It's, it's amazing how liberal... Well, Keith Olbermann, right? that's where yeah. he started. Yeah. yeah. So um, just to shut us down is part of their goal. It so, is. And that's, that's kind of the scary part is that, you know, when I think of the, the totality of what the left has kind of put together, again, I call it the seven pillars of propaganda. Mm -hmm. If you can envision these seven pillars of society, it's things like media, it's things like the government, it's things like science, Micah. Uh -huh. They've become the, the official spokesperson of what is scientific today, right? People who can't tell you what a woman is, people mm -hmm. who can't tell you um, that creation was a necessary thing right. in our very existence. They want to tell you what everything else means scientifically. And they consistently drip, drip, drip this lie, these lies and deceits and gaslighting, mm -hmm. and it's effective with a lot of people. Yeah. And you're getting it from all sides. And that's why a little old show like mine or people that do talk radio, um, they're doing a very valuable service because you're cutting through mm -hmm. that clutter, getting straight to the listener, whether it's on the radio or the podcast, and you're able to challenge some of this garbage um, that's not, not challenged really right. anywhere else in, in the mainstream for sure. So do you have concerns as a Christian? Where I see this. Um, do you have concerns about the left not just stopping at radio? The left is going after our churches, too. I don't know if people realize Amen. that they're trying to indoctrinate or infiltrate churches with liberal ideology. And they've certainly done that with a lot of some of the mainline denominations. But they're going after evangelicals now, trying to get them to back away from politics, which I would say is worldview, mm -hmm. which is a role of the church. Um, or they're trying to change their views. And, and, for example, let's not talk about abortion. Let's talk about climate change. That's right. That type of thing. It's kind of scary how much money they're pouring into a hundred percent. In fact, this I'll get to your okay. uh, question. Let me take the scenic route as I like to do sometimes, Micah. But my family and I, we sold our house three years ago. We bought a fifth wheel and we traveled the country on what we call the truth tour. And kind of the, the premise of that was to get into churches and talk exactly to these issues mm -hmm. because you are exactly right. The church has become, you can say, complacent, but it's also become, in some cases, corrupted with this right, stuff. Right. And so, what happens is, you, what happens is, the left has said everything is political, and then they tell the church you can only talk about things that aren't political. Right. Well, I have, you know, the Bible has things to say about things like the mm -hmm. beginning of life, the mm -hmm. sanctity. I mean, you, things you guys talk yeah. about all the time. And so, as Christians, we have an obligation to at least know that for starters and secondly where god and his word make claims or statements of truth we better be on the mm -hmm. right side of the issue mm -hmm. and so these things are not political in right. nature right. they are spiritual yes. in nature a lot of them some things are political and i don't think the church should get into politics but right. politics means everything now mm -hmm. and so to me we need to be awake to those very things because they are going to try to 
ta- tackle this uh, the opposition that's that they face with their ideas in the church. They go right to the uh, the 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 group that is most adamantly against some of these lies, and they try to take it down from within. I mean, this is where you get the assault on marriage, yeah. the assault on gender. Yeah. I mean, other things that have popped up within the the church as well. That um, the church has been asleep at the wheel, and it better wake up because you're exactly right. They are inside the mm-hmm. the, the church right now. Yeah. I was having a conversation with my wife, and it, I, I'm not asking you to endorse candidate, <laughs> and we don't endorse candidates. Obviously, people know I'm conservative, but my wife and I were having a conversation a few weeks ago. I think it was maybe after the, one of the presidential debates, and and she was concerned. Let's put it that way. And a lot of people are concerned about the demeanor of the two presidential candidates. And I said to her, I said, you know, I was thinking about that. And I think one thing that's hard for Christians is it is very possible. I think in my lifetime that the last Christian president, where someone actually had a story of, I was headed this direction, I met Christ, I turned this direction, was probably George W. Bush, which he talked about struggling as a youngster with alcohol, and then he met Christ and on a debate stage, mm-hmm. and that was like, whoa. Since then, they may call themselves Christians, but it's possible that we as Christians will not have a choice between one or two Christian candidates who are truly have a, have a faith. So what do we do then mm-hmm. when you're in a position where you have two candidates or in any race? I'm not just talking about political sure. presidential, where, okay, maybe they don't, don't meet my five criteria, or maybe I don't like how they deal with certain things. My concern is a lot of Christians are going to say, well, I don't like how Donald Trump tweets or says things or uses profanity, and I don't like Kamala Harris's laugh or cackle mm-hmm. or whatever, or her position on abortion, for mm-hmm. example. What do you do? What would you do? So they sit out because it's we're looking for hundred percent, even though we'll make other choices yeah. in our life that are never hundred yeah. uh, percent. It's uh, dangerous. It's dangerous, and that I think, and I'm sure you've got I don't know percentage wise, but a lot of people who think that way. Your your vote is not um, it's it's not more moral by withholding it from an election. Mm-hmm. I mean, one of these two people is going to be president right. in this case, or whatever, the state auditor or mm-hmm. one governor or whatever, there's going to be a winner. It's almost always going to be the Democrat or the Republican. Mm-hmm. I mean, sometimes there's libertarians or mm-hmm. third parties. But in general, especially presidentially, right. we're going to have a, it's going to be Trump or it's going to be Kamala Harris. And when I look at the ideas and the policies or just look at the party platforms, mm-hmm. I mean, there are things that are fundamentally anti-biblical mm-hmm. or anti-Christian that you'll find in Especially, just look at the issue of abortion within mm-hmm, the Democrat mm-hmm. Party platform. And to me, that is enough. I know I'm not endorsing a candidate right, for you, sure, yeah. but for me, that's more than enough. Because, you know, we, it's one thing to say the individual is not a practicing Christian or they're doing things personally that I don't approve of. Okay. But it's another to say that they are embracing and furthering an agenda mm-hmm. that's anti, mm-hmm. anti-God or anti-biblical, and that we have to step in front of that and change that. And it's also not just a one-time thing. I tell folks on my show, this this is the rest of our lives. Mm-hmm. We're not going to win this and mm-hmm. it be over. Right. We have to look at this. Reagan said freedom is always one generation away from extinction. So we have to look at this as a lifetime battle. My grandkids who aren't even born yet, Mm -hmm. it's going to be a lifetime Mm -hmm. battle for them Mm -hmm. as well. And that's the way we have to look at this. And we have to look at incremental gains in a good way. Trump brought us the end of Roe versus Wade (laughs) because of his appointments uh, to the Supreme Court. And that, you know, I'm not 100% on board with Trump's abortion policies. But it is definitely steps in the right mm-hmm. direction that have saved the lives already of children. Right. So right. that's how I look at it. Um, so if, so every few years, it's been a while since I've done this. I'm just curious if your audience is this way or you're sensing this. For, I don't know, every three or four years, I would poll people, our supporters or donors. We'd send it out in the mail. And what's your top issues? And I did this when I worked for Indiana Family Institute for 10 years, too. And up until maybe seven, eight years ago, it was always abortion was the number one concern. Mm. That's changed among my donors now. And this is before Roe was fell. So mm-hmm. it's close, 
I haven't pulled since. But the issue that took over that issue among my supporters, it surprised me, but I think they're probably right, I want your opinion on this, they're more concerned about religious freedom and maintaining mm. religious freedom because I, maybe they realize if you can't speak, it doesn't matter your position right. on life. If you can't preach, you can't preach about life or well, any other issue. So is religious freedom an issue that you think is high is. on the list? It is freedom of speech in general, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I, the, probably the entire First Amendment is, is at risk right now. So, um, yeah, I think that they're absolutely right to be concerned about that, especially when you think in terms of, say, my church. For example, is my church going to be, are they going to try to legally hold my church responsible mm -hmm. to say you have to uh, conduct a same-sex right. marriage, for example? Mm -hmm. Uh, these, these are real legitimate questions and concerns. Am I going to be able to share the gospel? I mean, look at what's happening just to the north of our border in Canada. Right. I mean, they are aggressively right. shutting down uh, people sharing the gospel, the mm -hmm. gospel message. Uh, it's, it's become a totally dystopian world up there. And those things have a way of making their way into our country mm -hmm. as well. You can already see that with some of our yeah. candidates for sure. Right. So tell me about some issues you've been talking a lot about the last few weeks that you've gotten good response to or on your heart. That I, yeah. I, I catch you certain mornings, not every morning, but so I know a few things you've been talking about. What's, what's on, your, on your heart right now? You know, the, the way that I look at what we talk about each day is I, I try to think in terms of, okay, the, the narrative, the media stories of the day, this is a springboard mm -hmm. to larger, to me, mm -hmm. to larger truths. Uh, but you mentioned thinking about the issues that have the most importance to the American people. What I've seen in polls is that the top two issues are illegal immigration right. and the economy. Right. And you know, you, you look at these things um, and these are, these are things that are causing real impact to real mm -hmm. people. And when mm -hmm. I think about families, Micah, mm -hmm. you know, a lot of times we can think obviously about school. Are they teaching these right. kids, our children bad things? Are they trying to take away the, the morality that I'm teaching them at home right. or in our church? It's absolutely happening. We need to fight against it. But it's also an assault on the family that has happened over the, the course of time where we have this idea that says now we have to have two parents work. Now, I'm not, if someone wants to do that, that's their prerogative, mm -hmm. their business. But I'm saying for many Americans, th that's not even a choice. Yeah. Yeah. And so what happens is they've created so many economic pressures on the American citizen. Mm -hmm. Government spending's out of control. Mm -hmm. Inflation has been out of control. These are real family issues, yeah. Micah, because it impacts the personal pocketbook. When you're sitting down at that kitchen table with your husband or wife, you're saying, you know, we have to send little Johnny to the public school. Right. And on top of that, I can't even be involved because I have to have a job. Right. And work 40. So parental time is becoming less and less. It is, yeah. and 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 it's it's. I mean, partially by design. They don't like the left. Doesn't like what yeah. we're teaching our children. Yeah. In fact, they are 100% antithetically against yep. it. So they want to deprogram them from the beliefs that mm -hmm. we're teaching them, and this is a heck of a way to do it. So the economy is obviously a front and center. For me, right. um, immigration is as well. I don't know if you saw the report. There's what uh, 100 or what was the number? 13,000 yeah. convicted murderers Ro that, roaming the streets. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and the, the, again, you talk about your family, your your children's safety, mm -hmm. your 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 wife's safety, going to the whatever to work or to work out or whatever the grocery store. Mm -hmm. These are real problems that we're facing. That honestly, Micah, have some simple solutions. Yeah. yeah at least to turn the tide. And, and those are completely being ignored by the current administration and by the folks in Washington. And it impacts families in dramatic ways. I was just reading a story about the, again, not to get too political here, but about the nominee for Democrat for uh, governor of Indiana, Jennifer McCormick, who had been the Republican superintendent of public instruction. Mm -hmm. So she's very strong in the education community and she put out her education plan. And I was reading an article about it, and one of the things she, she said, she talked about, she was kind of decrying government involvement in education, which as a conservative I agree with. Mm -hmm. But in it she said, but she was concerned about vouchers, and Indiana has one of the biggest, mm -hmm. best vouchers program in the nation. But she wanted to make sure that private schools had similar curriculum uh, of course. to public schools. And I thought if parents wanted that, they, they would have said <laughs> right. to the public But school. that's a danger too. It is. 
because if, if that's not choice. If the, if the state's telling a private school, hey, you have to, and she talked about private schools meeting standards. Well, if you look at the research, kids in private schools typically do better on standardized tests. Mm -hmm. um, and I, it makes me wonder, is this just, they don't like what's being taught in Christian schools? Yeah, they, they don't, and they, they want to be in control. I, I think sometimes, when I think of the political spectrum, Mike, I think of you know the far, far left. I call those the radical leftists. Mm -hmm. Then there's liberals who may still love the country. They just think the government should be involved. There's problems with their ideas, but the radical left hates the country. Yes, yeah. The radical left, actually, at their core... They are, they're anti-God. I know mm -hmm. that that's a strong statement, but they are truly mm -hmm. anti-God. Mm -hmm. And they are, I think that they're so convicted internally by the Spirit of God that they can't stomach the idea of walking out into society and hearing the things that they're convicted of on the inside, hearing those coming from other people, right. because it validates those, those convictions. Mm -hmm. God is convicting these folks. Sure. And so they want to shut it up. Mm -hmm. They want to make sure that no one's taught it. Mm -hmm. They think that that will prevent this from spreading. And yep. it's really, in a lot of cases, to insulate them to be able to live whatever morally bankrupt lifestyle they want to live. And so then they get in positions of power because they can control the next generation. Mm -hmm. This is dangerous stuff. Yeah. yeah, This is really dangerous stuff. We homeschool. I did too. Yeah. Um, and so I was a school board member for a public school in my early 20s. And um, I'm, I'm in favor of vouchers. I think if a school district is concerned about losing students, they should think about doing a better job mm -hmm. on yep. educating yep. students, on listening to the parents. We have, parent, we have schools now who say the parents don't have any say with what we teach kids in the yep. school district. Well, yep. how, how is that? Yep. I mean, name a business that can operate like that. Our government is supposed to be a representative republic, a constitutional republic, or even representative democracy, they're supposed to represent mm -hmm. what, what what exists in the world today where the people running the, the business or the entity don't have to listen to the yep. to the person who's actually providing the child yep. to say, here you go, you know, teach my kid. It's totally run off the rails. And schools, I think a lot of this are, are ground zero for this fight today. I was watching a clip from Thomas Sowell, the great economist, mm -hmm. wonderful. He was talking about how different public schools are from anything else we have in our society in the sense that they are basically government monopolies, but in addition to that, their customers are forced to go there by compulsory school mm -hmm. laws. So there's no, everything else we can pick and choose certain things. Uh, with, a, with a school, the people are required to go there whether they like it or not. Mm -hmm. And so the, there's a real disincentive to even m meet certain standards in public schools that you would with say, your local business. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where I think school choice is, is helpful. Um, the problem I think we have in Indiana is um, there aren't enough Christian schools. I mean, they're all full. The there's a lot of kid, parents who qualify for vouchers, mm -hmm. but they might be placed to send their kids if they want to go there. Mm. Now, inner school, you, know, you have inner choice between different schools, and that's great, too. But one public school to another is a good thing, too. That's competition. But if we don't have enough Christian schools or private schools to go to, what good's a voucher? Mm -hmm. So it's a concern, and maybe, hopefully the market will respond to that. We have all these churches that are, I, I've said before, we've got a lot of large churches around that Monday through Friday are pretty empty. Why not have a homeschool co-op there? Mm -hmm. Why not have a private school there? That type of thing. So. Well, I'll say this too, in homeschooling, you know, I say we homeschool. My wife does 99.99%. Right. .99 correct. Yeah, that's right. My wife would correct me. Yeah. What do you mean we? <laughs> that's right. That's right. I'm occasionally the yeah. principal. I'll yeah. do some tutoring. But she does. She does that. And, and you know, at first she wasn't, she didn't know if she could do it. She mm -hmm. was kind of intimidated right. by it. And it's understandable, right? right? Um, but I will say this. It's not how it was when I was a kid. There's a lot more resources. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more, um, there's groups. You mentioned yeah. some of these yeah. groups. And there's a lot of families that have turned to it. In fact, homeschooling was growing at astronomical yeah. rates after this whole COVID right, mess. Right, right. So um, you're right. There needs to be more, obviously, private schools. But homeschooling is yeah. a, becomes a more and more viable opportunity mm -hmm. for folks. My oldest son wants to be a pilot. So he can quite literally get on his flight simulator as part of his school right. day. Mm -hmm. um, and as we begin to look at flight schools for him to go to, like he has opportunities to yep. do that, that maybe he wouldn't be able to fit into a schedule in a traditional public school setting. So, Well, we've gone about 20 minutes. It's felt like two. 
What uh, what would you like to leave our audience with? Anything? You know, Micah, I think that I I try to end on a positive note on sure. my show as much as possible because you know the things we're dealing with are heavy, right? Um, and it can be a lot. <laughs> In fact, I have a lot of people tell me during po political season campaigns, I can't even listen anymore. Right. I just want to go home and cry or right. something. So, But the reality is we do face these difficult times. The stakes are incredibly high. Mm -hmm. But I do believe, I really do believe this at my core, that we have been granted by the grace of God another chance to, mm -hmm. to, to fix mm -hmm. what we're doing wrong in this country. I don't know how that story ends. Right. I don't know how it ends. But I do know that people are waking up. I do know that people are becoming more engaged. I do know that I was a political science in, uh, student in school. Back in those days, I didn't have many people to talk with about mm -hmm, politics. Mm -hmm. It's everywhere today. Right. People are dying for truth. And I would say to the conservative Christian believer in, in Jesus Christ, to say that people are looking for truth and mm -hmm. to not be afraid to mm -hmm. step up and to be that source of truth. You, you don't have to have all the answers. You have to be willing to engage and to share the truth yeah. you do know. And it is a remarkable thing to see what can happen if we all do that a little bit more, 5% more yeah. every day, week, month. So I just saw a story about 10,000 kids at the University of Arkansas going for a revival mm -hmm. or services. People are hungry for the truth they are. because they know information overload, a lot of what they're getting isn't true, and there's one source of truth, and that's, Amen. that's the word. So. Um, Thank you for joining us. Again, it's Freedom 95, 9.50 a.m. locally. I encourage you to listen to Todd from 5 to 7. And then what times on the weekends? It switches on switches the weekends. Of the yeah, yeah, yeah. We but, replay. Uh, but they can go to ToddHuffShow.com. Okay. They can listen to the pod. The podcast is available. It's the same content that's on and the radio. And you do an email, too. Tell us. Yeah, they can they can go to our website, ToddHuffShow.com, okay. to sign up for okay. our... Uh, we have a, a column that we've put on pause, but that we'll okay. resume here soon. and. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of content And can there. people listen on through the website later times? They can. Yeah, okay. they can go to ToddHuffShow.com slash listen and Great. listen there as well. Well, thanks for joining us. Mike, I appreciate it, It's good to see it, you sir. again. It's been, Thank been, you very seen, much. Our paths cross once in a while. I really appreciate the work you do, getting the word out and, and well, speaking truth. That. You know, God works with remnants in countries, and uh, so I appreciate you educating the remnant. Well, thank you, yeah. sir. Well, thank you for joining us today. I hope you can tune in to Todd Huff, either, no, regardless of where you are in Indiana, through his website. But if you're, say, south of Indianapolis, all the way to central Indiana, around uh, Donut Counties, you can pick him up on Freedom 95 in the mornings from 5 to 7. I think you'll really enjoy his show. Well, I'm Micah Clark. Thank you for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful weekend.